In web application development, we have to look at two sides, front-end and the back-end side. The front-end side will load on the client side inside the web browser. And the back-end side loads inside the web server. The end user will only see the front-end, not the back-end. To design front-end, we use, you guys already know, HTML, CSS and JavaScript. We use HTML to build the structure of the web page. We use CSS to make the website looks better by adding colors, fonts, layouts, etc. With the usage of JavaScript, we can make the website more logical, which means we can make the website dynamic. We can say something if someone clicks this button, show an alert or change this color to something else. Likewise, we can manipulate the DOM using the JavaScript. Doing this manipulating the DOM using the only JavaScript, it is very hard and also it consumes lots of time. As a solution for this, big companies like Google, Facebook are introduced some JavaScript frameworks. Google introduced the Angular and Facebook introduced the React. So what is Angular? Angular is a front-end framework built using the JavaScript by Google. So this is not something new. This is built with JavaScript. So keep this in your mind. In Angular application, still we are gonna be using the HTML, CSS and JavaScript. But with the Angular framework, we can build our web application fast and robust with pre-built JavaScript methods. So we don't need to write everything from scratch. Like the Bootstrap CSS framework, we learned about Bootstrap in the previous section. So if you can remember, in Bootstrap we have some pre-styled CSS classes. So by importing them to our website, we can design our web application fast. We don't need to write styles from scratch, right? So once again, Angular also something like Bootstrap CSS framework. In Angular also, we have some pre-built methods and techniques. By using them, we can build our web application fast and more robust. So let me show you a quick example. I think I have a paragraph tag in my website. So I want to add a CSS class to this paragraph tag using the JavaScript. So if you are doing this using the pure JavaScript, so first I have to add an ID tag to this P tag to identify this paragraph tag in JavaScript. So after that, we have to capture this P tag in JavaScript using this ID. For that, we have to use the document dot get element by id so let element assign document dot get element by id and inside the brackets we have to pass the this paragraph id as you can see here this is the id of this p tag all right next we have to assign the css class to this paragraph tag element which is this paragraph tag we captured earlier dot class name assign CSS class name. So I'm using this example dash class. So in here we are using the CSS class name property, which is this example class and assigning the CSS class to this P tag. So this is the DOM manipulation in plain old JavaScript. Let's look at how to do this in Angular. This is very easy. In Angular, we have class name property binding. Just put this inside the p tag. This will something looks like this. And assign the CSS class name. So comparing to the JavaScript way, this is easy and very clean, right? So this Angular property binding class name is a pre-built technique in angular but at the end of the day this class name property will compile to this javascript because browser doesn't know about angular thing browser only knows javascript with the angular framework we can do this by a single line of code rather than typing three four of lines so once again 
Angular is a front-end JavaScript framework for building client application in HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Hope you guys got the idea. The Angular CLI is a command line interface tool that used to initialize, develop, scaffold and maintain Angular applications directly from a command shell. In other words, if you can remember, Angular is a JavaScript framework. This framework has default pre-built files. In order to work with Angular, we need those files and techniques. With the help of this Angular CLI, we can create an Angular new app without any problem with a single line of command. Not only that, I told you earlier, but browser also doesn't know Angular. So at the end of the day, we have to compile Angular to JavaScript or we have to build Angular app to production. So we can build the Angular app using this Angular CLI. Likewise, we can update, maintain, scaffold and develop an Angular app using this Angular CLI. Hope you guys got the idea. So let's set up the Angular CLI. Go to this Angular CLI website, cli.angular.com. This is the official website of Angular CLI. To use Angular CLI, first we have to install Angular CLI globally on our computer. To install Angular CLI, we need Node Package Manager. Node Package Manager bundled with the Node.js. So we have set up this in the first section of this course. So if anyone of you not installed the Node.js, just go to the node.js.org and simply download and install this recommended version. After this installed, let's install the Angular CLI. All we have to do is just run this command, copy this command and paste it inside your command prompt or the terminal. If you are on a Mac, add sudo beginning of this command. Otherwise, you guys will get a permission error. PC users don't need to modify anything, just run this command. npm install dash g at angular slash cli. So this command will install Angular CLI on our computer globally. So we can access this Angular CLI from anywhere on our computer. This G flag stands for global, right? This NPM is the node package manager and this is the Angular CLI. We have installed Angular CLI on our computer. Now we can use the Angular CLI commands. In the previous video, we have successfully installed Angular CLI. Now we can generate an Angular app using the Angular CLI. So first, create a project folder. In previous, we have created our project folder inside the desktop. So I am going to use the same folder as my project folder for this section as well. This is optional. You guys can create this folder wherever you want. Now open the command prompt or the terminal. Navigate to the project folder. CD desktop. Hit enter. Again CD Udemy Angular course folder. As you can see here, this is the project folder name that I created earlier. Now what I want to do is, I want to create an Angular app inside this project folder. To access Angular CLI, we have to use the ng command, just n and g. Okay, if you can remember, we used the npm command to access the node package manager. Like that, we can access the Angular CLI by using the ng command. To create a new Angular app, we have to use the nev command after this ng command. So ng nev, then pass the project name. I am giving the project name as ng intro. This project name can be any name as you wish. Then hit enter. 
at first this will ask about the angular strict mod for now give this to know in the later section we we'll learn about the strict mod in detail so give no to this and hit enter after this we get this router option for this give yes so don't worry about this angular router thing we will learn about this in detail in a later section next this will ask about the styling method css or scss or sas or less we can select our preferred method so in this course we're going to be use only the css so select the css this will generate the new angular app and install all the dependencies for us wait until this complete this may take several seconds to minutes depending on your computer and the internet speed our new angular app is ready now open this angular project inside the vs code text editor Open the VS Code, go to the file and select open. Navigate to the project folder. In my case, it is inside the desktop and select the project folder. Inside that, I have this ang intro angular app. So select that folder and give open. All right. In VS Code, inside the file tree, we can see all these files. This is the default file structure of an Angular project. Now you guys may get scared by looking at these files. These all files are required files and default configuration files for the Angular framework. So we are not going to touch any of these files or the folders. We are only dealing with this src folder. Okay, so don't get confused. But I will explain these all files one by one so you guys can just get to know what are these files and what these files are doing with the angular framework so angular is using typescript instead of javascript for better maintainable bug free codes so these last five files are related to the typescript so this last file tslint.json file is looking for typescript functionality errors so next this file tsconfig.spec.json file is responsible for TypeScript configuration for the application test. Application testing is a different topic which is not covered with this course. So just keep this in your mind. This file contains TypeScript configurations for application test. The next one is this tsconfig.app.json file. So this file includes TypeScript configuration for this Angular app as well as this includes TypeScript and Angular template compiler options. Alright, next file is this tsconfig.json file. This is a solution style tsconfig.json file. This is used by editors and TypeScript language servers to improve the development experience. So this file is not doing anything with the compilers. So next we have a readme.md file which includes some angular CLI instructions how to run development server, how to build the app, how to generate components etc etc. So next we have these two files this first file package.json file this file includes all the required npm package dependencies and also app details like name, version and also the npm commands. These are all dependencies that we need in Angular project. So these all dependencies installed inside this node modules folder. As you can see here all the dependence files installed inside this folder. Next we have this file package-log.json file which includes version information for all packages installed into node modules by the npm client. Alright, next we have this karma.conf.js file which includes karma unit test config for this angular app. Next we have this angular.json file. This is the angular CLI configuration file 
for this angular project next we have this git ignore file which is for specified ignored files for github repo so if you guys may wondering what is github github is a version control system so next we have this editor config file this includes code editor configuration for this angular project next we have this browser list src file which includes different browser specific config details next we have these folders this e2e folder for the end-to-end -end test files for the angular app and this node module folder as i mentioned before all the required files for angular framework installed inside this node modules folder So this is the folder where we are dealing with. Inside this src folder, we can see these three folders and these files. This app folder, we mostly work inside this app folder. We will generate all the files and logics inside this folder. Next we have this assets folder where we can put our media files like images, sound files, icons, etc, etc. Inside this folder, we have environment variable files, which contains all the environment variables. Next, we have the FAO icon. This is the website icon. Next, we can see the index.html file. This is the main index file for our Angular app. Next, we can see this main.ts file. This is the main entry point for our application. This file compiles all app modules to run in the browser. Next, this polyfills.ts file provides polyfill scripts for browser support. Next, we have this styles.css file. So, this file is like a global main CSS file where we can write our CSS codes for the Angular application. The last file inside the src folder is the test.ts file which is the main entry point for testing Angular application. Next we have this app folder. If you can remember, I said earlier, this is the folder we are going to work mostly. For now, I give you a rough idea about these files. In later section, we will learn and work with these files in detailed okay this first file app dash routing dot model dot ts file is dealing with our app routers if you can remember when we creating a new angular app using the angular cli it was asked a question that we want to add the angular router to our angular app so i gave yes to this that's why we are getting this file this is automatically generated with the angular cli if in some scenario we don't need angular routers so that case we can give no to that question then we don't get this routing file i know some of you may think what is this router for now just get to know about this file we have a separate section for this in that section we will learn all of these in detail if you don't get it leave it next we have this four app component files Angular is a component based framework. So this is the main root component for our Angular app. With this HTML file, we can mark up all HTML codes. This CSS file, we can add these styles for this app component. So all the logics will code inside this app component TS file. And this app component spec.ts file is for unit test file for this app component. Next we have the app.module.ts file. In here we define the root modules that tells Angular how to assemble the application. So inside this file we can see these imports. With these module imports we are telling to Angular we are using these modules for this app. So import them and apply those modules to our app. So we can see this app routing module which is for the Angular router. If we don't add this inside this app module file, 
Angular doesn't know whether we are using the Angular router or not in this application. Without this import, Angular router will not work. Likewise, here we can see this app component import. So with this Angular knows we have a component called app inside our Angular app. So this file is very important. So we have to add all the modules inside this file that we are using with the our Angular app. Otherwise, we will get errors. Mm, so this is it for the file structure of Angular section. Some of you don't get these words, components, routers, modules. Just leave it for now. By the end of this course, you will get used to these words. The Angular framework is a component based front-end framework. So the main building block of Angular is Angular components. Without components, we cannot build a proper Angular app. So what is this component? The component is a combination of data, HTML template and logics, which represent an area of a view that shows inside the browser. So this is the view that users can see because components are loads inside the browser. So let's look at a real world example. So if I take the Facebook layout as an example, Facebook has this navbar, right sidebar, left sidebar and this Facebook wall which shows Facebook posts. In Angular, we can create components for each of this layout area. We can create reusable components. For this navbar, we can create the navbar component, this sidebar, left side and right side, we can create separate sidebar components. And also for this post list, we can create a main post component. And also inside this main component, we can create a component for a post list. So we can create this all in one page like traditional web designs. In traditional web design, we added all the markups for the home page inside the index.html file. So like that, we can add all the markups for this Facebook home page inside the app.component.html file. So if you can remember, I show this app.component.html file. This is the main root file of the Angular. But it's not a good practice in Angular because we can create separate components in Angular. If we create separate components, rather putting all in one component, we can reuse those components again in our application without coding it again. So what is this reusable thing? For example, this navbar must be shown on all pages. In this home page and if we navigate to someone's profile, on that page also we can see this navbar. In that case, in Angular, we can reuse this navbar component inside all other pages. We don't need to write the code for navbar again and again. Hope you guys got the idea. So now we have an idea about the Angular component. Now let's see how to create an Angular component. When we creating a new Angular app, we got this app component. So this will be the main root component in Angular. Alright, let's create this simple layout using the Angular component. So we create separate components for each of this layout and we'll import that component inside this root app component. For well, as our example, first let's create this navbar component. In Angular, as a good practice, we will create all the components inside this app folder. So first create a folder inside this app folder. The folder name will be navbar because we are creating a navbar component. Next create a file inside this folder. Give a name. First the component name navbar dot component and the file extension will be dot ts. If you can remember in angular we use typescript instead of javascript for better and bug free code experience. Angular already inbuilt the component function. So first we have to import the component module in order to work with Angular components. If you can remember when we learn TypeScript, we learn TypeScript modules. The same thing we're gonna apply here. 
all the features of angular components are inside of another file so we have to import that file to this component file at the top of this page type import inside the curly brackets module name so module name is component this c will be capital next from so in typescript for this we have passed the path for that importing module but in angular we have to import the module name inside quotes at angular slash co so this will be the path for this component actually this is also like a path all of the angular files are installed inside this node modules folder inside this we can find this at angular folder inside this folder we can see this co folder so this is the component modules path for this import we are not added this node modules folder path because angular already knows these files are inside the node modules folder that's why we didn't add the node modules folder path in here okay next we have to create the typescript class first the class name navbar component so carefully follow this capital simple letters usually we use the camel case naming convention for class names so first letter and all the new words first letter are capital like this after this add the class scope curly brackets so still this file is not an angular component in here we just created this typescript class in order to transfer this typescript class file to an angular component we have to add the typescript decorator class called component so this is the decorator we imported earlier now we have to use this so in typescript we can define a decorator like this first add sign and the decorator class name component this is also like a function so after this parenthesis inside this parenthesis we have to pass some values as an object all right first we have to pass this selector value for this component selector colon and selector name will be app dash navbar in angular for this component selector we give app as the first name and then we will give the component name so this is just a common naming convention for an angular component so you may wonder what is this selector this selector also similar to css selectors in css we use selectors to define css for html element we use the html tag name like this if the element is body tag we use the body selector if we have a css class we use something like this dot and the class name you got the idea right this is simple css like these css selectors in angular component also we use this selector value to identify this component hope you guys got the idea all right next we have to pass the template parameter for this so we have to pass the html markup for this component for example for now i pass an h1 tag here and between this h1 tag add this the navbar component and save this file now we have created the component with this component decorator next we have to register this component in angular modules then only angular knows this app as a navbar component otherwise this component will not work so open this app.module.ts file this is the main app module file in here we have to register our newly created navbar component so inside this app module file we can see these declaration imports providers and this bootstrap inside this ng module decorator so don't worry about this all we will learn this in later section so in this component section we will learn about this first declaration as you can see here the main default app component is already registered here like this we have to register our navbar component first we have to import the navbar component to this file so before we import the navbar component to this file first we have to make the navbar component class export otherwise we cannot access this navbar component class inside another file 
so back to the navbar component file and add this export before this class keyword so if you can remember we learn about this in the typescript section next back to the app module.ts file top of the page add the import import inside curl brackets the component class name is navbar component so once again follow the capital simple letters carefully after this from and the path inside quotes dot slash this is inside the navbar folder so navbar slash navbar dot component and one more thing we don't have to pass the file extension the angular compiler already knows this extension if you put the extension here we will get this compile error okay next we have to add this imported component inside the declaration like this app component after this comma and add the navbar component all right we have successfully registered the angular navbar component so in order to see this component first we have to run this app so let's run this app open the integrated terminal on vs code go to the weave and select this terminal or we can use this keyboard shortcut control and the backtick key inside the terminal run this angular cli command to run the angular app ng serve and hit enter so once it's completed go to this url on your browser i will use google chrome as my default browser throughout this course if you guys also can use the same browser this will reduce the most of the errors so go to this url localhost colon 4200 for an angular app the default port will be 4200 in case if your computer using this port for any other servers we can define the port when we are running the ng serve just simply put the port flag and type a different port number like this all right this is how the default angular app landing page looks like all these markups are inside the app component html file so i don't want this so i will remove this so back to the vs code and go to the app component html file and remove all these after this just put an h1 tag inside this h1 tags add this angular app save this file and back to the browser so now we can see this h1 tag perfect if you look at this code inside the inspect element tool we can open the developers tool on chrome right click and inspect element or the using keyboard shortcut Control, shift and i so inside this we can see the h1 tag with some angular attributes these attributes are coming with the angular so don't worry about that we are not going to deal with these attributes so what i want to show is this app dash root tag in html there is no element something like this so what is this if we open the app component ts file inside this component decorator we can see this selector app dash root so this is what we see here now you may wonder how this appears inside the browser in angular component in order to show a component inside the browser we will use this selector as an html element so open this index.html file as you guys know this is the first file load inside the browser when we open the angular app inside the browser inside this index.html file we can see this app dash root html custom tag so this app root tag represents the app component so this is how we got this app dash root element inside this inspect element if i remove this component element from here remove this now we cannot see anything here and also now we don't have the app dash root tag inside this inspect element so once again we use this component selector as a component identifier in order to render this component inside the browser 
we use this component selector as an HTML custom tag. Hope you guys got the idea, right? So now like this, I want to show this navbar component inside the browser. So the navbar component selector is the app dash navbar. So inside the app component HTML file, after this h1 tag, add the navbar component selector app dash navbar and hit the enter. So you guys may wonder why do we add this navbar component inside this app component file rather adding this straightly to this index.html like this app component. Cause in Angular, we consider this app component as our main root component. We don't touch this index.html file. We only work within this app folder and we put all our components inside this app component. So this is just a standard in Angular. All right. Now save this all and back to the browser. Now we can see this navbar works text, which is coming from this navbar component. And also we can see this Angular app h1 tag. So this is coming from our main app component. So this is how we work with components in Angular. So in previous, we added the selector and template property inside this component decorator. You guys now know what is happening with this selector property. If we recap this, we use this selector to identify and render this component inside the browser. So now let's see what is the use of this template selector. You guys may already notice this. Inside this browser, we got this navbar works. From where do we get this? If you look at inside the code on the inspect element, we can see this app navbar tags. Between this app navbar tags, we have this h1 tag with this navbar works. So what is this app dash navbar tag? So this is the navbar component selector. Inside that, we got this template values, this h1 tag. So inside this component decorator, we got this template values, this h1 tag. If I change this text to navbar template, save this, look at this. This value also change to this navbar template. As we can see here, now we can understand this template is loaded inside the browser for this navbar component. So what is happening here? When we load this component inside the browser, using this app component this will display all the content of this template value inside the browser so we use this template property to load html tags inside the browser hope you guys got the idea right so now we know how to show this component inside the browser using this selector and also we can show html markups for this component using this template property uh, now think if we want to add a CSS style to this HTML element inside this component file, how do we going to do that? In order to add CSS for this template, we can use another component decorator property called style. Using this style decorator property, we can add CSS style to this component. Alright, let's see that in action. So let's change the color of this H1 tag. So in our case, CSS selector is this H1 tag. Next, the CSS scope. So inside this, we are changing the color of this H1 text. So CSS property is color, colon, and value is something red. All right, save this and back to the browser. Perfect. So now, as you can see here, now this H1 text is in red color. So this is how we add CSS styles to component. All right. Some of you may noticed this. Usually we write CSS in multiple lines, not in one line like this, right? But in this component TS file, inside these codes, we cannot write multiple lines. If we add the line break here, we get this compile error. So we have to put everything in one line. For something simple CSS style like this, this is okay. 
but if any case we want to write some some multiple lines of styles for this component how do we going to do that so in angular component decorator we can do that by using the backtick symbol instead of this quotes which is located before the number one key in the keyboard so let's remove this previous style and put the backticks inside these backticks we can write multiple lines of codes without any errors so let's write the previous style again but this time we can write this in multiple lines css selector h1 and this is a scope inside the scope set the color to red after this let's add another style inside this so change the font size to something big 50 pixels now save this and back to the browser beautiful right now we have successfully wrote multi lines of css inside our component ts file using the backtick symbol and one more thing guys i forget to mention that we can use this backtick method to write multiple lines of html markups also so remove these codes and add backticks for this template after this let's put another paragraph tag and add some dummy text save this all and back to the browser awesome right now we know how to write multiple lines of codes inside this component decorator so in the previous section we have created this navbar component we put the html markups and styles inside this same page using these component decorator properties so it's okay but think if we have 100 lines of html markups and 200 lines of css styles putting them all inside this ts file it's make our code very noisy and unreadable so that can cause lots of problems and bugs when it's come to debugging oh can't even imagine right as a solution for this we can create a separate file for the html markup and a separate file for CSS. How do we do that? First, let's create the files. The first file is for the HTML template. So we are creating these files for the same navbar component. So create this file inside the navbar component folder. So create a new file and name this navbar.component this time this is an html file so the extension is html all right next create the css file the file name will be navbar dot component and extension will be css please note this carefully the naming convention is the same on these all three files first the component name navbar and second the component keyword and third the file extension so this file extension can be various depending on the file types and one more thing this ts file is the main file for a component so without that file we cannot create a component in angular so hope you guys got the idea all right we created the component html file and the component css file now we have to link these files to the navbar component so go to the component ts file in previous we have added these html markups inside this template now we have to link the external component html file instead of these inline markups for that first remove these all markups Next, we have to do a small change to this template property. So change this template to template URL. So this U is capital. So now this time, this component decorator property is template URL. All right. Now pass the component HTML files path as a path to this template URL property. The file is inside the same folder. So dot slash. And the file name is navbar dot 
component dot html that's it simple right so likewise now we have to link the css file so again remove the existing inline css and change this style property to style url then give the path of the component css file inside codes dot slash navbar dot component dot css beautiful we have successfully linked the external files for this navbar component so save this file and go to the browser wait what's going on here we only see this app component but we cannot see the navbar component markups why is that because if you can remember we removed all the inline markups and we linked the external html and css files so inside the navbar component html file we don't have any markups so this file is empty that's why we are getting nothing inside the browser so now let's add an h1 tag and put this navbar component inside this navbar component html file after this save this file and back to the browser perfect right now we got this h1 navbar component which is marked in this external html file all right let's add some style to this h1 tag so inside this navbar component css file write the style for this h1 tag h1 and the scope the color will be red save this and again back to the browser as you can see here external css style is applied to this h1 tag that's why this h1 text turned into red color perfect now we have separate files for html markups and for the css so we write all the markups inside the html file we add all the css styles inside this css file and we add all the logics inside this ts file so now we can work on this navbar component more efficiently so in the previous section we have created this navbar component from scratch we code all of these from the beginning some of you may get these creating components very hard some of you may not but don't worry we have an easy way for this we can create angular components using the angular cli with a simple line of command so inside the integrated terminal just run this command so ng this command is coming from the angular cli so g this g stands for generate next c this c stands for component because we are creating a component here and at last we have to give the component name so we already created the navbar component so now let's create this post component so the component name will be post that's it to run this command just hit the enter all right post component is generated successfully if we look at the file structure we can find this post folder inside this app folder so inside this post folder we can see these files post component ts file html file and css file so we learned about these all files and created these files in previous lecture from scratch now if you look at this further in addition to these files we got this another new file this post component dot spec dot ts file what is this file this file is responsible for unit testing in angular which is a beyond the scope of this course so don't think too much about this file so we are not going to deal with this file all right first let's look at this ts file so inside this we can see this import component and this component decorator so inside this component decorator we can see this property selector now this is app dash post so this selector will be used to identify this post component all right next we can see this template url for the component html file and we can see this style url and the path for the post css file 
So if you look at this carefully, we can notice some few additional things on this page. Just leave these for now. We'll come to this in a moment. Now let's look at inside the post component HTML file. Inside this, we can find this simple default markup p tag saying that post works. So inside the CSS file, we got nothing. It's just a simple empty CSS file. Now go to the appmodules.ts file. Inside this declaration, we can see this post component register. This is the beauty of Angular CLI. If we create a component manually, we have to do this all step one by one from scratch. If we missed one of these steps, our app will break. And also generating a component using Angular CLI. Can you imagine how much of time this saving for us? Awesome, right? All right, now go to the browser. Mm, still, we cannot see the post component here. Why is that? Cause we just only created the component. That is not enough in order to show the component inside the browser. We have to put the component selector inside this app component. So if you can remember, we use the app component selector as an HTML custom tag. Go to the app component HTML file. So the selector is app dash post and hit enter. So the VS code intelligence will complete this as an HTML custom tag. So now save this and back to the browser. Perfect. Now we can see this post works, which means post component is now rendered inside the browser. So open this inspect element. And if we look further inside the elements, we can find this app dash post tag. So this is how we can generate angular components using the angular CLI. All right, let's get started with display data. For this displaying data, we have several methods in Angular. So let's look at the first method. So the first method is string interpolation. This may sound like a bit familiar to you, is it? Yes, you are correct. We learned this string interpolation when we learning components in the previous section. So in this section, let's learn the string interpolation in detail. So what is this string interpolation? As you know, we used this string interpolation to show dynamic data on the HTML component page. So in the Angular component, we have three files, this HTML file, CSS file, and the TypeScript file. So this TypeScript file is the main entry point of an Angular component. So we do all the dynamic things inside this TypeScript file. So let's create a variable inside this app component file, something message. If you can remember in TypeScript, we have to declare the variable type when we creating a new TypeScript variable. So this variable's data type is string. Now as I in a value for this, something message from the TypeScript component file. Now I want to show this message to the end user. The browser shows only the HTML page to the end user, not the CSS file or this TypeScript file. So in order to show this TypeScript variable inside this component HTML page, we use this string interpolation approach. So let's see this in action. Go to the app component HTML file. Down here, create a p tag. Inside this, let's show this message variable inside this p tag. The variable name is message. So what do you think guys? Is this correct? Yes, this is wrong. Why is that? Cause this variable is a TypeScript variable. So first we have to create a TypeScript scope inside this HTML page. You guys know inside of HTML page, we can write inline CSS using the style tags. So between this tag, we can only write CSS. Cause now this scope is a CSS scope, not an HTML scope. If I write HTML inside the scope of this style, this won't work. You got it, right? 
Like this, if we want to write some logic in JavaScript, we have to create a JavaScript scope inside this HTML page. So we do that using the script HTML tags. So between this, we can write any valid JavaScript logics. So like this, in order to show this TypeScript inside this HTML file, first we have to create the TypeScript scope inside this HTML file. For that, we use these two curly brackets. So open and close two curly brackets. All right, now inside this place, this variable name message. Now save this and go to the browser. Perfect. As you can see here, we got this message printed here. So inside this scope, we can add even simple calculation, something like this one plus two. Save this and back to the browser. Perfect, right? We got this three printed here. So with these curly brackets, we are creating a kind of a TypeScript scope inside the browser. So we call this special type of angular syntax string interpolation. Using this, we can show data inside of an HTML file which is declared inside of the component file. When the Angular compiler sees this string interpolation, this will automatically look inside the relevant component file and print this relevant variable data inside this HTML tag. So with this, we can show any type of data to the user. This name is string interpolation, but we can show numbers and boolean values inside this string interpolation. So don't get confused with this string name, okay? Once again, to show a variable data inside the browser, we use this special type of syntax string interpolation in Angular. Hope you guys got the idea. In previous, we learned about string interpolation. In this video, let's look at the property binding. Think there is an image in our database and we got that image path to a variable inside this TypeScript file. Something image img url. This u is capital. The variable type is string. And the value will be something. For now, let's add an image path from Google. Search for an image, copy the URL and paste it here. For now, we just think we are getting this from our database. All right, next I want to show this inside the browser. So how are we going to do that? If you want to show anything inside the browser, we have to add that inside the HTML page. So go to the app component HTML file. We want to show an image. So create an image tag, ing hit enter all right next for this src we have to pass the image path we have this image path inside this typescript file so we can pass that variable to this src using the string interpolation so inside this src codes double curly brackets inside these brackets the image src variable is this ing url now save this and go to the browser. Beautiful. We got this image inside the browser. So like this, we can pass dynamic values for HTML properties using the string interpolation. But in Angular, we have a different and cleaner approach for this dynamic property values. We call that property binding. Let's see this in action. This is very easy. Just copy and paste this image tag after this. Now let's change this string interpolation to property binding. Wrap this src property with square brackets. Now remove this string interpolation curly brackets and keep this image URL variable. That's it. This is the property binding in Angular. So look at this syntax. This property binding is more cleaner than this string interpolation, right? Save this and back to the browser. We got this image here, which means this property binding is working perfectly. This string interpolation is working for this, but we used this property binding cause this will give us some cleaner code. And another thing, 
when an angular compiler compiles this component the string interpolation property is going to be automatically compiled as this property binding no matter what you are using at the end of the day this will compile to this property binding method so in my opinion this property binding approach is better than using this string interpolation approach so usually we use string interpolation to bind data inside of a tag for example like this heading tags paragraph tags inside of a div tags and we use this property binding approach to bind a property of an html tag like this image src tag hope you guys got the idea all right in the previous lecture we look at property binding so in this video let's look at how to bind a css class to an html element so we have this heading tag inside this app component html now i want to change this color to something red color so normally we change this color using the css first we will add a class to this class class name will be something text dash red save this file now open the app.component.css file inside this let's add this style so first the css selector the class name is dot text dash red then css scope next write this style inside this scope color colon and color will be red save this and back to the browser as you can see here this h1 tag is now red perfect all right now what i want to do is i want to make this h1 tag red color when this boolean value is true for that we're going to use the angular class binding method so let's do that remove this class attribute it's also same like property binding so first square brackets inside these brackets we are trying to bind the class property so class after this dot symbol then give the css class name test dash red so now i want to apply this red color to this text when this boolean value is true let's add the condition after this equal sign inside quotes give the boolean variable name here b double o l bool that's it now this red color will apply when this condition is true so we already created this css inside the css file so save this all and back to the browser perfect as you can see here this text color is now red if i make this boolean to false now look at this this color is black because this condition is now false hope you guys got the idea so this is how we conditionally bind css classes to an html element using class binding in angular all right now we know how to bind a css class to an html element with the condition using the class binding approach in this video let's see how to bind an inline css style with the condition to an html element using the style binding this also a variation of property binding but similar to previous class binding let's see this in action for this style binding let's create another h1 tag after this h1 and hit enter h1 text will be style binding as i mentioned earlier this also same as the class binding so inside this h1 html tag first square brackets inside that this time we are binding an inline style so first style after this we can pass any properties of this style object in dom so this is a bit different than regular css for example if we want to add the background color in css we add that something like this css property is background dash color then the color value but if we are passing this as a style binding we have to use the 
HTML DOM style object property which is a bit different than the regular CSS property. For this background color we have to pass background this time no dash just type color with the capital C. That's it. Go to the Google and search HTML DOM style object. Go to this first result w3schools.com in here you can find all the DOM object properties of this style object. So alright back to the work. In here I don't want to add a background color. I just want to change this text color to red. So the style object property is same as CSS property color. You can find this on this website. So after this we are gonna check this bool value is true or false. So after this equal sign double quotes inside this pass the argument bool this is this boolean value. Okay next we have to pass the CSS value. So if this argument is true set this color to red. If this is true we define that using this question mark. So question mark after this single quotes and value is red. So this is not done yet. As you can see here we are getting a compile error. Why is that? Because this argument required the else part as well. So after this colon sign we use this question mark for the if statement and for else we use this colon symbol. So after this for now just pass an empty value. That's it. Save this and back to the browser. Perfect. Now this color is red. If I make this boolean value to false, this time this h1 tags color is back to the default black color. Think if you want to change this text color to something blue color when this boolean value is false, how do you going to do that? Very simple. We can define the else in line using the colon sign. We already added this. So after this colon sign inside single quotes pass the color that we want to change. This time I want to change this color to blue. So pass the blue value inside this quotes. Save this and back to the browser. Perfect right. Now this h1 is blue because this bold value is set to false. Again change this to true. Save this and back to the browser as you can see. Now this text is in red color. If we recap this quickly, in Angular we can bind style to an HTML element using this style binding method. Inside square brackets we pass this first style because this is a style binding. Next the DOM style object property. So if you can remember this CSS DOM object properties are a bit different than regular CSS properties. You can find list of these style DOM object properties in this W3School website. So I pass the color property because I want to change this H1 color if this boolean value is true. So after this assign inside double quotes the argument which is this bool if this bool value is true set red color. This is what we defined with this question mark. Ok if this is not true set the color to blue we define that using this colon symbol. This is something like inline if else. We defined if with this question mark and else with this colon mark. That's it very simple right. So this is how we do style binding in angular perfect. Alright in this video let's look at how to bind an event in angular using the angular event binding approach. When a user interacts with a web application such as a keyboard key press, a mouse click or a mouse hover, it generates an event. These events need to be handled to perform some kind of action. This is where this angular event binding comes to action. Alright. First let's create a button inside the app component HTML file. After this button tags it enter and button text will be something click me. Now let's bind the click event to this button. 
In plain JavaScript, we do something like this on click. Then we pass the JavaScript function that we want to execute when this button clicked. So this is the traditional way, but in Angular, we have a different and more clean approach, which is Angular event binding. Let's do that. Remove this JavaScript on click. If you can remember, we used square brackets for data binding, but for event binding, we use this normal brackets. So don't get confused. For a data binding, we use square brackets and for an event binding, we must use normal pair of brackets. So otherwise, this click event will not work. All right, brackets. Inside of this bracket, pass the event name. So as I mentioned earlier, I want to bind the click event. So the event will be click all simple letters in plain javascript we use on click event but in angular we use just click event name simple right after this as usual equal sign and pass the target method name inside of this quotes in plain javascript we pass the function name here but in angular you already know Angular use TypeScript instead of JavaScript. So in TypeScript, we can create methods. So pass the method name here, button click and the parenthesis. This C will be capital. Now save this and back to the browser. Click this button. Look at the browser console. In case if you forget how to open the browser console, right click and select this inspect element. After this, go to the console tab. Or you can use the keyboard shortcut shift ctrl i and go to the console tab so in the console we are getting an error what is this error this error saying that this button click is not a function why is that can you guys guess yes of course we just only link this method to this click event but still we don't have this method initialized or created inside this component class that's why we are getting this error. To solve this error, let's create this button click method inside the app component file. Wait, before that, I want to show you something. You guys maybe noticed this. So look at this. We got this compile error that's saying this button click is not defined. Not only that, look at this internal terminal window. We are getting the same error and also we are getting the line number as well. See how this is easy to debug the error. This is the beauty of TypeScript. We can get the error on the stage of compile. We don't have to wait until the runtime of this app to identify the errors. All right, get back to the work. Go to the app component TS file and create the button click method. Inside this class scope, the method name is button click. This C is capital. After this parenthesis, and the method scope inside this method let's log a simple message button click event worked save this file now look at this this time we are not getting any compile errors perfect go to the browser now click on this button look at the browser console we are not getting any errors like previous if we look further, we can find this button click event worked log printed inside the console, which means the button click event is working perfectly. So this is how we use event binding in Angular. So in previous, we learned how to get the value from the input field using the Angular template variable. So in this video, let's look at another cleaner way of getting data from this input field. In previous, we declared a variable in HTML file and we passed that variable values to this method and we captured that parameter. But now let's see how to assign this input field value to a variable created inside the component class. All right, first create a variable inside of this component class. Variable name is username. This n is capital. The variable type will be string. Now what I want to do is, 
I want to assign this text field value to this variable. How do we going to do that? This is very easy. For this, we have another data binding method in Angular like the string interpolation property binding. So for this, we have Angular two-way data binding method. Let's see this in action. Keep this previous example. After this, create another input field. The type will be text. Now let's see how to bind this text to this component variable. Very simple. Inside this input, first create square brackets. Inside this square brackets, open and close simple brackets. Inside these brackets, type ng model. This is ng model is a special angular syntax for this two way data binding. Keep this in your mind, this m must be capital. Next, equal sign. Now inside this codes, pass the variable name that we created inside the component TypeScript file. Username. This n is capital. That's it. We have successfully assigned this text field's value to this username variable, which is created inside this ts file. If you look at this carefully, we are getting a compile error. ng model isn't a known property of this input field. Why is that? Cause this ng model is inside of Angular Forms module. So in order to remove this error, we have to import the Forms module to our Angular project. So open the app modules.ts file. Inside this, let's import the forms module. At the top of this import section, add the import statement. Import inside curly brackets forms module. This F and M will be capital letters. Next from then module path will be at angular slash forms. Pass this inside quotes. After this, add this imported forms module inside this import. After this browser module, comma forms module. That's it. Now our Angular app knows that we are using the forms modules features inside our Angular app. Now go to the app component HTML file. Now look at this. This time we are not getting any compile errors. Beautiful. All right, now let's simply add the key up event with the event enter key filter like the previous example. Just copy and paste it here. This time we don't need to pass this template variable. Remove it. That's it. Now go to the app component typeset file and remove this parameter. We don't need that anymore. This time log this username variable instead of this parameter variable. If you can remember, in order to access a TypeScript class variable inside of a method, we have to use this keyword. So this dot username, this n is capital. Now save this all and back to the browser. Type something inside this text field and hit enter. We got this John Doe inside the console. Beautiful, isn't it? So this is how we use two-way data binding approach get the values of input field. An angular directive is a basically a special type of technology that can manipulate the DOM object like adding HTML elements, removing HTML elements from DOM dynamically. Directives are one of the very very important feature in Angular. In the previous video, we learned about Angular components, right? So this Angular component also including to this Angular directive category. Directives are components without a view. They are components without a template or to put it another way, components are directives with a view. Everything you can do with a directive, you can also do with the component. But not everything you can do with the component, you can do with a directive. Alright, in Angular, we have four types of directives. Component directive, structural directive, attribute directive, and custom directives. So this first type of component directive 
which is an angular directive with a template v so we already know about this an angular component as this template weave html page so this angular component also one of the directive types in angular all right the next one is structural directive using this type of angular directive we can change the dom layout by adding and removing dom elements with this we can change the appearance or behavior of an element component or another directive at last we got this custom directive with this we can create our own custom directive from scratch yeah i know these definitions may got confuse you but don't worry we will learn about these all types of directives one by one all right in this video let's look at the first directive ng4 we use this ng4 angular directive to render an array object inside of the html view this ng4 is a structural directive because using this ng4 we do dom manipulation such as adding removing html elements to the dom let's see this in action so inside the app component ts file create a simple array for a list of post the array name is post array make this a capital the type is array and the array type is string now assign this to simple array values inside of square brackets the first value is post1 put this inside of quotes because we are creating a string data type array the second value is post2 likewise post3 post4 and post5 now i want to show this post array inside the browser as previous we can use the string interpolation for this let's do that and see how it looks like inside this gmail view page inside of a p tag let's add this string interpolation double curly brackets inside this array name is post array save this and back to the browser as you can see here we got this array printed here but this is actually not looking good right all array values stacked in one line so now i want to render this array values one by one inside of an unordered list how do we going to do that now we know inside this array we got these five values because we hand coded this array so we can render this one by one something like this create a ul tag with five li tags inside this first li tag we can use the same approach as previous string interpolation this time i'm going to print the first value of this array rather printing all values like previous so from an array we capture single data using the array index number so first the array name post array inside square brackets to print this first array value inside this li tag we have to pass the array index number which is 0 hope you guys already know about the array array index start with 0 not with 1 so the index of this first value is 0 after this inside the second li tag this time the index number is 1 next 2 likewise 3 and 4 now save this and back to the browser this time we got this beautiful list instead of previous ugly stacked array values all right now this is okay but this is not the best approach to fetch a list of array values we did this string interpolation approach because we know the array value count because we hand coded this array think if there is a situation we are getting this array from the database and we don't know the length of this array in that case we cannot use this string interpolation approach directly in that case we don't know exactly how many values are inside the array as a solution for this situation 
we can use the ng4 directive. Normally we use for loop to fetch an array in JavaScript, something like this. So inside the constructor method, for loop keyword, then the logic, inside the brackets, let i assign 0, cause array starts with 0, semicolon. Next we will define the for loop condition, i, this i variable, smaller than this dot post array dot length. With this condition we are telling to this loop, run this loop until this i variable is less than this array's length. After this semicolon and add an increment to this variable i plus plus. Alright inside this for loop log the array values, log hit enter, inside brackets post array, inside square brackets the array index we represent with this i variable. Save this and back to the browser. Look at the browser console. We got this array values printed one by one. So this is the JavaScript way. But in order to render this array values inside the weave template, we use angular ng4 directive. So let's see this in action. Inside the HTML file, we're gonna render this inside of an unordered list like previous. So after this, create another ul tag. This time, we need only one li tag. Now inside this li tag, asterisk or the star symbol, ng4. This f is capital. After this, assign inside quotes, let post of post array. After this, inside this li tag, now we can use the string interpolation to show this array values. Open and close two curly braces. Inside this post, which is this post variable. Save this and back to the browser. Look at this. We got this list of posts which is fetched using the ng4 directive. In previous, we fetched this string array using the ng4 directive. Now let's look at how to fetch an object array using the ng4 directive. This also the same as the previous string array. First, let's create an object array inside the component.ts file. The array variable name is obj array. This A is capital. The data type is array and the array type is object. Now assign this to a list of array objects, square brackets for define array. Inside this, let's create an object. We create object using the curly brackets. So open and close curly bracket. Inside this, let's pass the object key and value. So as a first object key value pair, add this. The key is id and value is 1. After this, comma, next object key value pair is post title and value is post 1. Put this inside quotes because this value is a string. Like this, create four more objects, copy and paste this and add comma after this. The id is 2 and the post title is post 2. id 3, post 3, id 4, post 4. At last, id 5 and post 5. Now let's fetch this inside the browser using the ng4 directive. Back to the HTML file and create a ul tag with one li tag. Inside this li tag, Asterisk ng4 assign inside codes let post of obj array. So this is the new variable and this is the object array variable that we created inside the component TypeScript file. So inside this li tag, 
Let's print this using the string interpolation. Open and close two curly brackets and the variable name is post. Save this and back to the browser. As you can see here, we got this object object printed here. What's going on here? In order to show an object inside of the HTML view, we have to convert this to a JSON value. We cannot directly show an object inside the browser view. That's why we are getting this object object printed here. To solve this, we have to convert this to a JSON format data. So we can use the angular JSON pipe. Just add the pipe operator after this inside this string interpolation and the pipe name is JSON. That's it. Save this and back to the browser. Perfect. We got this object values printed here with JSON data format. And guys, don't worry about this angular pipe thing. We have whole separate section for these angular pipes. So in that section, you will learn about these pipes in detail. All right, back to the work. Now we got this object array values printed here, but we don't show data inside the browser like this, right? Let's fetch only this post title value inside this li tag. For that, back to the VS code. Remove this pipe. We don't need that anymore. We are going to print only the post title. With this post variable, we got all the object key value pairs. So after this, dot post title, which is the object key for post title. Save this and back to the browser. Perfect, right? Now we got this post title printed with this unordered list. Before the end of this video, one more thing. You guys maybe noticed this already. We are getting an error here saying that this post title is not defined and there is no this value inside the object. Actually, this is not a compiled error. Cause if this is a compiled error, we will get that error inside the terminal and also this code will not work. As you know, we successfully rendered this post title inside the browser without any problem. So what is wrong with this? Actually, this is a kind of a bug in ESLint plugin. In order to solve this problem, we have few solutions, but I recommend you guys to do this. Just change this array type object to any. Now save this. And back to the HTML file, look at this, this time we are not getting this error. So this is just a small bug in my opinion, hope the ESLint team may fix this soon. Alright, so this is how we fetch data of an array object using the ng4 directive. Hope you guys got the idea. In previous, we learned how to remove an array object value from an object array when we click this button. And also I said that in order to remove an object from an array, we need the index number of that removing object value. Then only we can remove that object value from the array. So for that, we use the traditional JavaScript approach to get the array index. We pass the target array object to this onDelete method as a parameter and inside that method we captured the target object and we got that array object values index using this index of method after that we removed that object from the main array using the splice method to get the target array index we have a very simple and cleaner way in angular with this ng4 attribute, we can fetch the index number as well. Let's see this in action. After this ng4, add a semicolon and add this index as i. So what is happening here? I just assign this array index to this i variable. This variable name can be any name. Now we can use that index number on this weave. Let's render this index number inside the view. Before this, just add the i variable, which is assigned to the index. Save this and back to the browser. Look at this. 
we got this array index in front of this post title starting from zero because you guys already know array starts from zero all right now all we have to do is just pass this i variable instead of this full post object to this on delete method so remove this post parameter and pass the index variable i save this and go to the component is file inside on delete parenthesis this time we are not getting the post object so remove this and create a new parameter variable to capture the index number so i will define this as index now we don't need this index of method remove it that's it this time this index is this parameter which is coming from the html b save this all and look back to the browser click one of these delete button as you can see here this removed this array object so this is how we use the index of an array using the ng4 directive think if there is no data inside of this array this is empty so in that case if we render this inside the browser we are not getting anything because we don't have anything inside the array now what i want to do is instead of this empty view i want to show a message here something there is no data to fetch if there is any data inside the array i want to fetch them here if there is no data i want to show the message there is no data to fetch clear right to do this we're going to use another directive in angular which is ng if this is something like if else in javascript we use this ng if directive to show something conditionally inside the view so let's see this in action once again what i want to do is i want to fetch this list if there is data inside the array if there is no data i want to fetch a message instead of this empty list so before this let's create a div and put this unordered list inside this div now i want to fetch this unordered list when there is data so inside this div tag let's add the ng if directive this also a structural directive so asterisk ng if this i is capital after this equal sign now pass the condition inside quotes pass the array name which is obj array then dot length after this greater than sign and zero so some of you may wonder what is happening with this condition with this condition i am checking that is this array's length is greater than zero if there is data inside of this array the length of this array will be greater than zero so in that case this statement becomes true if this is true this div will show inside the browser very simple right next i want to show a message when there is no data so down here create another div inside this div create a p tag and add this message there is no data to fetch now let's add the ng if directive to this second div inside this div tag asterisk icon ng if equal sign inside this the condition this time the condition is obj array dot length equals zero with this condition we are checking the length of this array is equals to zero or not if there is no data in the array the length of this array becomes zero and this statement will be true so in this case this div will show inside the browser very simple logic hope you guys got the idea save this and back to the browser as you can see here we got this message there is no data to fetch because there is no data inside the array now click this button add new data this added the new data to the array 
Now look at this. This time we got this unordered list. Because now inside our array we have this new data. If I click this again, we got this second value printed here. Now remove one of this value using the delete button. Now we have only one data. Also if I removed this last array value, can you guys guess what will happen here? Yes, you are correct. If I remove this last data from the array, the array becomes empty. This ng statement will return false because there is no data. And this second statement becomes true. So this ng if will remove this unordered list from the DOM and this will show this message p tag inside the DOM. So let's see this in action. Click this delete. We got this message. Beautiful, right? So this is how we use ng if directive in Angular. So actually what is this routing? Routing is basically means navigating between pages. You have seen many sites with links that direct you to a new page. Let's look at an example. Just go to the Angular official website angular.io. So this is the home page of this website. If you go to this features tab, this URL is changed to this. After this domain, we can see this slash features. If I go to the docs, this change the URL to docs. So this is what routing. This routing is commonly used in all websites and web apps to navigate through the website pages. You guys already know Angular is a component based front-end framework. So in Angular, we use the routing mechanism to navigate around components. So think this Angular's official website is a build using the Angular framework. So when we go to this angular.io website, this is the main default router, which is this first page of this website. This showing us this home page component. So likewise, if I go to the features tab, this removes the home page component from the DOM and show this features component inside the browser view. So this is the simple idea that I can give for Angular routing. So once again, using the Angular router mechanism, we can navigate through different Angular components or different views. Alright, in this lecture, let's set up a new Angular project for this routing and navigation. So open the command prompt or the terminal, navigate to the project folder. As usual, my project folder is inside the desktop. So cd desktop, inside the desktop, my project folder is the Udemy Angular course folder. So I'm going to navigate my command prompt to this folder, cd Udemy Angular course. Perfect. Now I'm inside my project. So let's create the new Angular app inside this project folder. So we learned about this. So in order to access the Angular CLI, we use this ng command. To create a new Angular app, niv, then the project name, something ng-routing. This can be any name, no need to follow exactly as mine. So now hit the enter to run this command. Give note to this strict typing mode and hit enter. Yes, of course, we're gonna use the Angular router, but if we give yes to this, this will automatically set up all the necessary configuration for us. But we'll first see how to do this from scratch. Then only we can get the exact idea about this Angular routing. Once we learn about this from scratch, then we know the idea. So after that, we can use this easiest way. So give no to this and hit enter. Now select the preferred styling method. Select the CSS method and hit enter. That's it. All right. The new Angular app is ready. Now open this inside the VS Code. So cd into the new Angular app. cd project folder name is this ng-routing. Now run this command to open this inside the VS Code. Code, space and dot. Hit enter.
In Angular, we got inbuilt a separate module for routing and navigation. We don't need to additionally install anything. So in this lecture, let's see how to implement on this router and navigation to this Angular project. So first thing first, let's create a simple app to manage post that has routing and navigations. For now, let's create a component for post list. Inside the integrated terminal, run this command ng g c and the component name is post dash list hit enter to execute this command perfect we got the component in order to show this post list component inside the browser we have to add this component selector inside the app component html file we learned about this right so let's add this inside the app component html file remove this default html boilerplate we don't need that now add an h1 tag something angular blog site after this h1 tag let's add the post list component selector which is this app dash post dash list so select the autocomplete this will complete this as an html custom tag perfect now let's run this app inside the integrated terminal ng serve and hit enter after the development server started go to this url localhost colon 4200 perfect we got this heading and this post list work text which means our post list component is successfully rendered inside the browser so if you notice we rendered this post list component directly inside the app component html file now what I want to do is, I want to show this component inside the browser when a button clicks. So create a button before this post list selector. The button text will be post list. Save this and back to the browser. Perfect. So as I mentioned earlier, I want to show this post component when this button clicks. So let's see this in action. For this, we're going to use the angular routing method. So in order to work with angular router, we have to tell angular that we are using the angular router with this project. For that, we have to register angular router module inside the angular app modules. Very simple. This also like previous components, pipe service and module register. So open the app module.ts file. Inside this first import the router module. So at the top of the page. After these imports, import, the module name is router module. Carefully follow these capital simple letters. After this from, this module is coming from the router. So at angular slash router. That's it. Now as usual, we register the modules inside the imports array. So after this, comma, router module dot for root and parenthesis this for root is a static method that defines the router module class so we use this method to define root or main routes for our angular application so now we can pass the array of routes object to this for root static method as a parameter so array inside this we can define the router objects which must have the path and the component key value pairs so let's see this in action. So inside this array object, as you know, we define objects using the curly brackets. So open and close curly brackets. Inside this first key value pair is path and the value is for now just pass an empty string. The next key value pair is component colon. So this value also set to an empty string. So with this key value pairs that we are telling angular to load this component when the browser URL changed to this path. As I mentioned, I want to load the post list inside the browser when clicking the button. So let's define a path for the post list. Inside this path value pass the router path post, a plural word. Now pass the component that we want to show the post list component so pass the component name i made a mistake for the component we don't have to pass this as a string so remove these codes 
without codes just pass the component name post list component that's it we have successfully created our first router now we have successfully created our first route save this and back to the browser as you can see here still we can see this post component cause in the previous lecture we added this directly to the app component which is why we are getting this post list works so now we don't need this so remove it from the app component html file now save this and again back to the browser now we got nothing here navigate to this post router after this base url slash and the router path is post hit enter still we got nothing if you can remember we defined the router when the user navigates to this path show this post list component if this works correctly we will see this post list works p tag inside the browser but we got nothing here what's going on here in order to show the relevant component view inside the browser we have to use a special type of angular html element which is router outlet without routing we rendered the component view inside the browser using the component selector as an html tag so the same thing we are gonna do here this time we are showing the components inside the browser with the routers so for that we have to add the router outlet here this router outlet also coming under angular directive category but this is different we use this as a custom html tag like the component selector so let's add this inside the component html file router dash outlet select the autocomplete this will automatically complete this as an html tag now save this and back to the browser navigate to the post path as you can see here this time we got this post list works which means now the router is working fine some of you may wonder what is happening here it's very simple in order to show the component inside the view we added the component selector as an html tag inside the app component html file like that now we added this router outlet directive as an html tag to show relevant component when there is a router so very simple hope you guys got the idea now we can load the post list component inside the browser when we navigate to this post router path we did this manually by typing the path inside the browser address bar now what i want to do is i want to load this component when clicking this button so let's see how to do this very simple for this in angular we have another directive which is router link by using this we can navigate to a specific router when clicking this button so this is a directive so add this inside the button starting tag router link this l must be capital as always follow the capital simple letters correctly after this equal sign inside codes pass the path that we want to navigate slash the path is post note this carefully when we define the route we didn't use this slash but when we using that define router path we must add the slash before the router path okay that's it save this and back to the browser go to the main url now click on this button as you can see here this loaded this post list works here look at the address bar perfect right when we click on this button this url change to this router path that's why we got this now let's add a button to navigate to the main url so back to the vs code before this button create another button the button text will be home set the router link the main home page or the component if you noticed we don't have any relevant router for the main root component 
But if you navigate to the project main URL, which is this localhost colon 4200, we got this weave, which is this app component. How are we getting this? As you know, the main root component is this app component. This generated automatically by Angular CLI when we creating a new Angular project. How this component load inside the browser? If you can remember, we learned about this. When we navigate to the root URL of this app, this will first load this index.html page. So this is the main page that loads inside the browser. If you look at inside the index.html page, we got this component selector app dash root, which is this app components selector. So this is how we getting this main root components weave inside the browser. If you look at this further, we got another new HTML tag, which is the base tag. This is pointed to this slash URL. What's happening with this? With this angular nose, this is the main root file to load inside the browser when someone navigate to the root URL. So this is what base URL. So without this, angular doesn't know how to open and navigate through the website. Let me show you a quick example. Remove this base URL, save this and back to the browser. Look at this. This time we got nothing. Look inside the browser console. As you can see here, we got this error saying that no base href set so this is what i try to tell you guys without this angular cannot understand the navigation of this angular app hope you guys got the idea so now add the base url save this and go to the app component so now we want to add navigate to the main view when clicking this home button so as previous add the router link directive to this button this time the URL path is this base URL which just slash symbol. Save this and back to the browser. Click on this post list button. We got the post list component view. Now click on the home button. Look at the URL. We again navigate back to the base URL. So this is how we deal with base URL. Hope you guys got the idea. In the previous lecture, we learned about the base URL. When we loading the base URL, this will open the index.html file inside the browser. Inside this index.html file, we rendering this app component. In routers, we have so in routers we have not defined any page to the base URL. In the real world app, we don't put many codes inside the app component. We use separate components for this. So in this lecture, let's see how to define a base router and point that to a another component. For this, let's generate a component. Inside the integrated terminal, run this command to generate a component. NGGC. The component name is home. Hit enter to execute this command. Now let's define a new router for the base url inside the app module ts file create another router object this time path is the base url slash but so in the router object we don't add this slash so just keep an empty string so this will represent the base url the component is the newly created home component That's it. Save this and back to the browser. In the base URL, as you can see here, this time we got the home works, which means home component loaded successfully inside the browser on this base URL. Now navigate to the post list. This time we got the post list component. Again back to the home, we got the home component. So this is how we define the base router.